Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about Earth and the Moon. And specifically, just like the description in the title says, we're going to be investigating if Earth and Moon are actually dual planets. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. Alright, so maybe this is a crazy idea, but it's actually something that has uh, been questioned several times. But there are several scientists that believe that Earth Moon is not an Earth and a Moon. It's not a planet and a Moon. It's actually, possibly, a dual planet. Which kind of is ironic because we normally refer to a Moon or Moons as a satellite of a planet. But if our Moon is not a Moon but actually a planet, then that kind of changes things a little bit. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about the science behind this. And also, I'm going to tell you right now, and you'll find out in the end of the video why, the Earth and the Moon will actually be dual planets. So anyway, let's get to do some science. Let's, let's actually talk a little bit more about it. And first of all, let's actually discuss the idea of binary planets. So a binary planet is basically a planet orbiting with another planet, not around another planet, but basically kind of like this. You have a planet and then another one in a binary orbit with it. That's a perfectly defined um, binary planet. If you were to compare them to each other, their mass would be... If you divide the mass of one by the mass of the other, their mass ratio would be about one, or close to one, or relatively close to one. On the other hand, because they're orbiting around one another, their barycenter, or the center of their orbit, is actually on the outside of both objects. So it's actually right there. In this case, it's in the middle. Um, in the case of our solar system, uh, for example, our sun actually has a barycenter outside of it, when you look at uh, the Sun-Jupiter binary system. Although obviously you wouldn't call Jupiter a binary star because it is a very large planet, but it's definitely not a star. Now in one of the previous videos, we actually discussed Pluto and Charon uh, binary system. And we even mentioned the fact that maybe this is a binary planet system as well. And here, if you were to divide the mass of Pluto by the mass of Charon, you would get the ratio of about two to 17 or about um, 11.7 percent. So th this is 11.7 percent of this. Now this is pretty close to one. Obviously it's not very close to one, but you know their very center is outside of both objects. They are relatively close to one. The only thing that they don't have is that neither one of them is technically a planet, because Pluto lost its planetary status back in 2006. But nevertheless, this does seem to be a binary or dual planetary system. There's a lot of other objects in our um, solar system, like, for example, several asteroids that do act like binary systems. And in that sense, um, we have to once again go back to our Earth and take a look at the ratio of masses here. So a mass of the Moon is about 7.4 times 10 to, to, to the power of 22 kilograms, whereas a mass of our Earth is approximately 81 times higher. It's about 6 times 10 to the power of 24. So if you were to divide the masses, you would get 1 over approximately 81, which is not necessarily close to 1, but it is way, way closer to 1 than any other planet with any other moon in our solar system. As a matter of fact, if I were to go to Jupiter and look at its biggest uh, moon, Ganymede, the ratio between their masses is way, way smaller. So here we have 1.5 power um, 23. And here we have something that's about maybe a thousand times more massive. And so here the ratio is a lot closer, closer to 1 divided by 1000 than 1 divided by 81 like it is with Earth and the Moon. And this is the biggest moon we have here. So it only gets smaller and smaller as you look at other planets. So in that sense... The mass ratio between Earth and the Moon does seem to satisfy the requirement for a planetary system. Alright. Well, is there any other definition we need? Well, we need to look at the center of mass or the barrier center. And if you actually look at this right now, if you were to combine these two objects, or I guess select both of them, and select their barrier center, you would see that this is where 
the definition fails. The very center for Earth Moon system is actually inside our planet Earth. And for this reason, technically, this would not meet the requirement for a binary planetary system. Or would it? Well, here's the thing. A few million years later, the moon is actually going to be a lot farther away. As a matter of fact, it's going to move uh, by about 4 centimeters or just over 3 centimeters every single year from now. And so when it actually, in a few million years, moves about twice the distance, you now will see that the Barry Center is actually outside of our planet Earth. And this, once again, meets the requirement for the binary planet. So it seems that in the future, in a few hundred million years from now, the Earth-Moon system will, by definition that we have today, be a, a binary planet or dual planet. Basically, it's not going to be a planet and a moon anymore. It's actually going to be a binary planet with very interesting parameters. So... That's kind of what I wanted to talk about in this video, and I kind of wanted to just discuss the idea of us redefining our Earth and our Moon in the future. Do you actually agree with this? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, if you know of any other good examples of binary planets or even binary stars that I should take a look at and still haven't, please post them in the comments below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's finish this by maybe just maybe destroying our Moon and see if any of the... Uh, explosive fragments make it to our planet Earth. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.